In the last episode, we started working on the bow and stern timbers. We cut out patterns, and we started gluing laminations. In this episode, it gets a little steamy while we finish up the forefoot. So <clears throat> later we need to steam bend the frames for the boat. But right now we need to steam bend some timbers to make up the forefoot. Um, otherwise we'd have to do thinner laminations and it would just be a ton of glue and a lot of resawing. So we decided to do this instead. So the tank we got for the smelter didn't work. The steel wasn't solid enough. So I cut it up and made it into our boiler. So there's the wooden lid. So one part makes our big tank. You know what, this would make one hell of a crawfish boil. <laughs> um, anyway, so we got our tank, fill it full of water, and then the other half of it has become basically a wood stove. So I made a door for either side, some air holes in the bottom, and some places out the back for the smoke to go. So we'll put the lid on it, and put the steam box on there, and light the fire, and in theory, Get it hot enough that we bring all of this water up to a roaring boil, which pours steam into the steam box. And two hours later, our big thick timbers are hopefully loose and floppy enough that we can bend them around the mold. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we should probably explain why we're steaming these timbers. So we got the keel timber in one piece, and we needed to laminate pieces for the stern and the stem. So there's three pieces in the stern, and four pieces in the stem. Most of them were pretty easy. The forefoot, which is this part that joins the keel timber to the bow assembly, that was the trickiest one. And we can look at that in a little more detail. So this piece right here, is the forefoot, and that joins the keel timber with the bow assembly. And if you think of the boat striking an object, say this pointer here, or hitting a big wave, this bow assembly wants to come back. And now this forefoot, there's a lot of other framing that helps stop that from happening, but this forefoot is a big piece of that. Uh, so it needs to be very strong, and it needs to withstand those forces. So the forefoot has to fit on top of the keel timber here, and so it has to be really wide. And then it tapers quite dramatically to where it meets the stem up here. So I think it's six inches to 14 or 16, something like that. And then back here, it's two or three inches thick. And here, it's almost a foot. So you have this big timber that's short and wide that goes all of a sudden it tapers dramatically to narrow and deep. Uh, so to get that out of one balk of wood would be would be massive or it would have to be something with some weird funky grain that grew just perfectly the one in a million tree uh, which we don't have so we ended up steam bending it and doing you know the best we could to eliminate grain run out and have a really strong forefoot so here we have all of the backbone timbers for arabella all the rough laminations and their corresponding patterns. So here we have the pattern for the forefoot and I'm sitting on the actual forefoot. So one of the tricky things with this is the shape of it. So we have this ruler here that's about two inches thick and that's roughly the thickness of the wood we had to work with for the laminations. So imagine if we kind of laid our beams like that 
So that would be one, that would be two. That's pretty good, gives us a long, strong piece there. And then as we come up here, we start to run into issues. So this gets really short. That's not a very long glue line. The farther you go, the funkier that glue line becomes. So we could have tried to fit this out of one piece and put a scarf in. That's also less than ideal. Ideally, the timbers would go from one end to the other, and the grain would kind of make the same swoop as the timber. And ultimately, that's what we ended up doing. So we figured out if we took three beams and steam bent them, we could get one piece that went from the back of the forefoot all the way to the front, and it would give us two layers on the top of the forefoot that were solid, continuous from one end to the other. We could steam bend the third layer in that would get us a good chunk of it. And then last but not least, we could just straight up glue on a couple boards and make up the very nose of it. And that way, when we have our bow assembly attached up here, and that's bolted onto our keel, and this wants to go this way, it's fighting that entire timber and that grain runs the entire way. And we don't have to worry so much about the grain run out breaking or the glue line being short and being weak. Um, so to do this, we ended up setting up the steam box and the generator and building a mold, kind of a rough framework of the arc that we needed to get. And then Steve bent these timbers that I'm sitting on. And now we have the foreflip. Butt is toasty. Those are my hands. Oh. This is so cool. It's amazing that it bends like that. Yeah. Just, I mean, we just pushed it. Like the clamps are pretty much just holding it, and the spring back is minimal. Yeah. And the bottom one barely sprung back when I clamped it. This is wild. So this is going to be a big chunk of the forefoot. Your ass is going to be bolted to the keel. I'm going to be at the beginning of the stem. First part of the boat is smashed into a wave. Or a reef. Hopefully not a reef. No, no reef. <laughs> it's crazy to think if all goes well. We're going to live with this timber. And go possibly see many oceans and many latitudes with it.
So these are the two inch thick planks that we steamed and bent that we're using to make up the shape of the forefoot. So the forefoot connects the keel to the bow and we don't want grain run out, which we can explain some other time. But basically this way, the grain will run all the way along, match the curve, and we won't have any short pieces of grain that could end up breaking. So now that we have this, we need to make the remainder little nose piece up here. And it's a lot easier to glue pieces together that are flat and straight than trying to get curves to match. So what we're trying to do here is make one more piece that's going to come on top of this that has one face that's curved and the other side that's flat. And then once it gets glued on, it's very easy to add on a couple more layers to figure finish out the tip of this point. So what I did, if you look on this side, is I drew in lines to represent each one of these lifts. So I knew that this down here was the final shape that we needed to make. And then you might be able to see the marks where I put the nails. And I did the printing process just like we do making the molds. And I printed this curve onto a piece of pine. And what I end up with is this curve. Now mind you, this isn't completely perfect, um, but it's going to put us in the ballpark and let us do the final shaping later. So this curve pretty much matches that curve at station two. You can see my mark here for station two. So then I took this template and went and found a piece of oak that was nice and thick and had the proper length and width. And that's over there. I'm going to take a look at that. Okay, so here is the board that I chose. Set it on edge and I put my pattern on it and then I drew the line and then I just made lines every inch all the way across and connected them down. And what these are for is to guide me with the skill saw. So I'm going to take the saw and cut through right down to this line, each of these, and that's called a kerf. And that makes it really easy to come through with the chisel, knock them all out and get down to the rough shape pretty quickly, but also pretty accurately. And those cut lines will give me references every inch to make sure that I'm not going too deep. Once I have this all dished out, I can bring it over to the rest of the beams, put it on there, and do any final tracing, any final fitting uh, until it's a nice tight fit. So I'm going to wedge it back in here so it doesn't move while I'm working on it. Fire up the skill saw. And I think it's 48 inches, so I should have 48, 49 cuts, something like that. these get shorter, getting them to bend is a little bit harder. Um, the other thing is even with it glued and steam bent, you know, there's a little bit of it that kind of maybe wants to go back to its original form. So by putting this one in that's got the dish, one, that helps make sure that these are always going to stay curved. Because if they want to straighten out, they got to fight this one. And which is kind of a really minor point. Um, and probably more theoretical. But the really big one is that that way we didn't have to try to steam bend these last little pieces and try to get them to match that curve. So gluing on the straight runs is a heck of a lot easier than trying to steam the planks and getting the curves to fit. So by dishing that one, we made the next laminations go that much faster, that much easier. And if we decide that we want to add just a little bit more to this for whatever reason down the road, it's a piece of cake to do. Um, it would have been a lot harder if everything was curved. So these top three are the ones that we steam bent. And then this one, if you look real closely, you can see it's fatter at either end than it is in the middle. 
And this is the one that Satchel helped me. We worked in the shop almost all day to dish out and fit. And then we have the two little flat pieces that make up the last bit of the nose. And this will end up getting cut kind of in a straight line all the way back and then a straight line up to the tip. And then this curve will be the curve that you see inside the bilge of Arabella.